this is Level Up Luke and this is the Queen City Soccer Show. I'm joined by Jorge Gonzalez, aka Top In 90, the head honcho, yeah. the, uh, the emoji tweeter himself. That's it, man. We got Charlotte's breaking news source here. Jorge, how you doing today, buddy? Good, good. I'll cheers your cheers, beer. man. I'm doing a little water today. It's okay. We're here in Matthews, North Carolina at the Carolina Beer Temple. Enjoying this nice, beautiful, sunshiny day. We've had a couple of uh, rainy games to start off the season, a little bit of wind, yeah. but I think the weather's finally turning around here. Uh, Jorge, can you tell me, just for the folks who, who may not know, what is your involvement like with Charlotte FC and the whole community around Charlotte soccer? Yeah, man, so I guess you would have to take it back to, you know, we I started my channel, I want to say December of 2019. Okay. Just like, I've always loved soccer. I mean, growing up, I was a big... Barcelona and Liverpool fan that I would watch religiously Let's go. and the Honduras national team like that's that's always been my number one love you know and like I would you know back this probably like 08 09 I was a kid still but like these guys would be playing in like the championship you know and like you didn't really get that on TV but you could find these obscure websites that right. would play the games and I'm like yeah give me the virus I just want to watch the game <laughs> Yeah. Right, so I've always had that love, and I was like, you know what, I want to do something where I'm talking about soccer. And that's how Top Bin 90 started, where, you know, we wanted to cover some soccer in Charlotte as well, because they were uh, bringing their team here, right? right? Like, that's when the team was announced, and ever since that, man, I started going to the events. You know, I started making some really good connections, developing really good sources, and you know what, we started becoming a household name within the Charlotte community. And it's been a really cool journey, you know, we've grown like, it's still unbelievable to me, like, what we've been able to accomplish, you know, we've got people on the writing side now that do articles, we've got people that create content, we got videographers, so it's, it's really cool what we're developing and like, where we're at now, but I'm even more excited for the next three to five years of some of our bigger goals that we have. Well, tell me about that. So I think more, it's a strategic growth that we want to do, you know, the next step is the Carolinas. You know, like covering more soccer in the Carolinas, and then after that is branching out all over the country. So that's probably like the long-term goal. Nice, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Hey, congratulations. Thanks, I, appreciate I mean, that. I've seen the rapid growth. I've been a follower since, uh, you know, first season of Charlotte FC. Yeah. And um, you know, you just won the 2023 Footy Awards for sure for media. I yeah. mean, that's massive, dude. Like yeah. getting a community award like that. What does that mean to you? It means a lot, man. It means that you know that. People really value what we what we put out, you know, because as you know, and you're kind of entering this space more like it's a lot of work. That it's a it lot takes, of work. It's a right? grind. And then it's a lot of work when you're doing Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, yeah. content side, you know, articles, right? So it's it, it just goes to show me that people truly care about what we're putting out. So it's important to continue to do. Absolutely. Do you view yourself as kind of a leader in the space, having so many Charlotte FC podcasts and, and fan media that has sprouted up since you guys started? It's a really good question. I don't think that's up to me to decide, but I think that, you know, we're one of the most prominent yeah. people that get listened to. So I guess I would say yes, you know, because we're to me, it's more about what we can do that's great and what kind of standard we can set for our company. Yeah. You know, to be honest, I'm not really looking around trying to say, okay, this guy's doing this or this person's doing that. It's more like, how can we be the best at what Top Bin 90 is and how can we continue to grow that? Yeah. And you know, if we're setting a certain standard for ourselves and other people want to follow that, then that's great because I think from internally, like, like our guys know that we have big goals that we want to accomplish. That's awesome. And tell me about the name Top Bin 90. How'd you come up with that? Yeah, man. You know, like, you always know, like, when you hit the ball top bins, yeah. you know, it goes into that angle, that 90 angle. The Top Bin account was taken, so I added the 90. <laughs> so that's how Top Bin 90 started. That's sick. You I mean, know? I've known you for years. And, like, I never asked you that. I was always wondering, yeah. like, where did that come from? And honestly, man, just to give you, like, a side funny story, um, we actually had that account, like, two, three years prior on Instagram. Okay. Because, like, the Mexican national team was here in town. Right, right. And um, I talked to a couple of journalists, and they were like, hey, they're going to go train here. So we went to the training session, and, like, we were just with the journalists. And like, all right, everybody come here. 
And so we just walked with her. Yeah, there we <laughs> and go. I was like, let me create an Instagram account real quickly. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and dude. then that's we went live and we got like 50 followers that day. Your, just your off, first exclusive recording. Yeah, exactly. Because oh, I, I posted on like, I guess they tweeted something, the Mexican, and I was like, hey, right. it's great to be here. And people saw that tweet and went and went, <laughs> or they saw the Instagram and they went and like started watching the live. So that Let's was, go. but I didn't do anything with the account for like two years. Oh, you know? uh, dude, so. that's awesome. Well, so speaking about like the international soccer presence in Charlotte, I mean, we had the International Champions Cup, we've had some national team games come through, and it seems like that's just been getting uh, bigger and bigger for the city. As far as your fandom and being a Honduras national supporter and Charlotte FC, do you see kind of a difference in the coverage uh, for Top at 90 covering national teams, or are you guys just going to cover anything that comes through in town? Yeah, it's interesting, man. We're... We've been discussing that internally of how we want to move forward with certain things. Obviously, if they come to Charlotte, right. I think that we're going to do coverage of that. But we also want to do coverage of things in an interesting and a unique way. Because, and when I say that, it's like it would be very easy for us to go right now and start covering Atlanta. Right. You know, we can go. We we've got the presence. They know who we are, right? But the problem is, like, to what extent can we cover Atlanta, where it's interesting enough? where there's not other eight other people that are already covering it, right? right? Where it would be beneficial, like here we've provided a lot of value. And anything that I want to put our name on, there has to be a lot of value there. You know, so I think it's from that perspective. Internationally, when they come here, of course, we'll do coverage on that. But to me, right now, it's more of what's the interesting angle we can take covering this versus just doing what every other outlet does. I mean, Definitely. people are going to go watch ESPN first before they come to Top in 90 for, you know, something that's happening internationally. That's just right. the reality, you know? And there's uh, all kinds of reporters, like you said, The Athletic and ESPN. And there's sure. the guys who make their, their bread on the breaking news coverage. Yeah. But when it comes to Charlotte FC, you're known for the emoji tweets. Oh, yeah. Tell me about the emoji tweets. Well, listen, man. My personality is more of, hey, I'm, I can be serious and I like to have a lot of fun. Right, so I can't always be having a good time, yeah. and I can't always just be serious. So it was important for me to for that to be reflected in the brand that I built. Sure. That's why I'm a business owner. I don't like being told what to do, you know? And so I was like, okay, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it my way. People are either going to like it or they're going to love it, and that's up to them. <laughs> you know, the market always decides, that's it, in yeah. my opinion, right? 90% of people love it, 10% of people hate it. And fair to them if they don't like it, right, you know. Right. That's just the reality of how we do. But Tell I like that. Everybody. Yeah, I like teasing. I like you know doing stuff like this because it heightens people's emotion before the news. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so that's just it's something that I, I love to it do. It works. It works. Yeah. It totally. Uh, so I mean, kind of transitioning into you being a business owner. So it's, uh, let, let's talk about Jorge. Uh, what's your story? Yeah, man. So you know, I came from Honduras with a suitcase and a drink. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Now, I was born in Honduras, came to Charlotte when I was five, uh, grew up here, went to NC State for a bit, okay. came back, didn't finish, like every business owner, they typically don't finish college. Right, right. You know? <laughs> um, worked in the banking industry for a couple of years, and um, then I transitioned over to, you know, I started seeing some momentum with Top Bin 90, and at that time, also, a friend of mine um, wanted to start a social media agency. So we went in business together at that time. Awesome. We've been growing that company now for almost two years. So um, so I own that and then I own Top Bin 90 where over here now is okay, we have all these points, we have all these momentum, we have all this strategy, is how do we incorporate bigger sponsorships? How do we partner up with people in the area where they benefit from the two, three million impressions we get a month? Right. And how do we benefit from what they can provide us? Yeah, you got to make it self-sustaining. One hundred percent. Monetization—that's the name of the game. I know we're trying to work on some stuff on our side at a much smaller scale. <laughs> so it's good to see, uh, good to see you growing and getting the big-time sponsorships here. Um, in terms of your background, man, I saw really interesting. It looks like you were a loan officer. I was. I was a loan originator. That's sick, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm a real estate agent. That's okay, nice. My job. Yeah. So I got a little bit of that going on. Uh, what was that like during COVID? Going through the. It was very uh, interesting. Honestly, it was great, to be honest yeah. with you, because rates were so low. Right. Right. right you know, like, you would sneeze and have a loan application done, yeah. you know, because people wanted to uh, 
take advantage of those interest rates. Yeah, man. I'm Versus, locked into a 2.7. So yeah, I'm, exactly. You know. <laughs> um, but what happened was, and what made me like kind of transition, was the company I was at had they pretty much just did refi, like 80% of the business. Yeah, that's a lot. And when it goes from 2 3% to 6 7 8 yeah, yeah, yeah. those phone calls start drying yeah, up there's, there's and you no just got to keep going. Yeah. yeah. And they let 80% of the company go. I was one of the people. And that's really when I made my decision. I was like, okay, I can go and get another job because I had done banking for seven years. Yeah. I had, I, I've been a licensed banker before. You know, I was like, okay, there's opportunities, but I'm like... I really don't want to work for anybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel you, man. Yeah. I, hey, I, I've been working for myself for seven, eight years now, yeah, so man. I feel you, man. I There's feel you. just a different freedom yeah. that you have. And I'm like, even if I'm not making a lot of money, I value that freedom more than, you know what, making twice the amount that I was making, right, yeah. and working for somebody else. Yeah, the hardest thing for me, and I, I would tell people that aren't, you know, a 1099 or they're not a, a business owner, is... Uh, it, it just sucks working hard, putting in the the blood, sweat, and tears, and then seeing someone else's name on your work. Yeah. So I, you know, I have my company that I've had for a while, and, and seeing my own, you know, product out there is is uh, a lot more satisfying for me. It is one hundred percent. And then I mean, I had an experience at a job that I was, you know, where I was doing really well, and one of my coworkers got angry and said that, you know, my boss was giving me like unfair leads and it was just a whole mess and they Drama. interviewed us and then at the end they didn't find nothing and that really rubbed me the wrong way. I was like, I really worked hard and I'm being questioned for my hard work. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? That let me know that mm, I could get fired at any time. Yeah. Good. That's good to know. I'll take that mental note because in my own companies, if something goes wrong, I get the ball back and I continue to shoot. I've yeah. always been that guy. I don't want to pass the ball and let somebody else shoot. Give me the ball. If I shoot and I fail, I know it's because of me, not because of somebody else. Dude, I love it, man. That's that's that mentality, man. It that is, grind man. set. One hundred percent, man. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's let's go into some you know light lighter questions here. You know, I ask everybody on on these media series and these uh, super fan interviews and everything. Like, as far as what what your interests are, if there was like one movie you could watch for the rest of your life, what would you pick? The most violent year. Ooh, I, I absolutely love Let's that movie. Let's go. I believe yeah. that's an A24 movie, too. Is it? Very okay. high quality, man. Yeah, high quality production on that. Yeah, I can't remember the guy's name now. Uh, Oscar Isaacs, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's my boy. I love that movie. He's awesome. And he's on Duran, too. You know that, right? I did not know that. Yeah, actually. he is. Dang, you learn yeah. something new on these podcasts. Yeah, huh? man. He's, he's uh, <laughs> half on Duran. Uh, okay, that's good. Yeah, I, he's sick. He's a yeah, great actor. I love that movie because you could just see, like, stuff is happening. Yeah. And things aren't going the right way. You just got to continue to push and continue to push, right? And I love that. I love, oh, that's I love the inspiration behind. I've watched it four or five times now, and it always sticks to me. <laughs> you know, so that's probably one of, one of my go-to's. That's Especially awesome. like if, I want to say if I feel overwhelmed or like oh, reggaeton, right. morning, right. cool. midnight, middle of the day. Francisco, who's always with me, you know, <laughs> can attest to that. It could be 8.30 in the morning and either like, this man is playing oh, that's sick. 10, 10 p.m. club music. I was like, that's just how I get pumped up. Well, isn't that uh, uh, Big Pat? Patrick Oshman? Is he in uh, some of the, the reggaeton too? I don't know. He might be. The Afro beats and like, okay, all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think he yeah is. Reggae, okay, uh, nice. I think I heard that on an interview. That's sick, dude. Um, all right, very cool, man. Uh, any any uh, last thoughts before you go that you want to share with our, our viewers, listeners, and where can they find you? They can find us at Top Bin 90 on all our socials. They already follow you. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's, if you're a Charlotte FC fan, you follow Top Bin. But. Yeah, but yeah, I'm just, I mean, I think it's just that. I mean, I love seeing the community continue to grow. You know, to me, there's, I don't know, people like, I think sometimes people get upset or mad when they see other people doing, like, there's like, oh, there's more yeah. podcasts or there's all of this going on. To me, man, like, as long as you're focused on what you're doing and you can provide value, right. like you'll be able to hit an audience that I can't hit. Or people will relate to you versus what I, that may not relate to me because right. X, Y, and Z. And that to me is fine, you know? I mean, we have one or two professional reporters that I, I would describe as like your for beat sure. reporters. For sure. For Charlotte FC. And that is nowhere near enough for a professional sports team. So there's plenty of space for fan media and, and you're leading the charge on that. Yeah, I appreciate so, that. Yeah, I mean, and I think, I think, we're very lucky that Charlotte FC, you know, kind of provides us that opportunity because yep. I don't think you go to other markets, it's very different. Yeah, yeah. You know? 
even I think we're blessed enough where I feel like if we 85 percent of the marks that we go on we're good yeah. you know they'll let us in but just to see other people like I've got friends in other fan medias in other areas that you know make great content that have high quality stuff and they still don't get the access that I get, which I'm like, man, I'm very grateful yeah. for the opportunity that Charlotte gives us to do that. Even though they, even if they don't like me all the time. Right, right. <laughs> I, I mean, hey, preaching the choir, man, they gave me press credentials and I was just like, what? <laughs> like, what? I, that was a surprise to me too. Um, but I, I was just thinking, man, it, it's been three years now with, uh, with Charlotte FC and I've been going to all the games. Uh, I go to some of the away games and I go to the Independence games and Crown Legacy. I feel like I see you at all the events, at oh, all yeah, the games. Uh, you're at like everything. I've been seeing you there for years and years. And one place I saw you that I ran into you was up in Cary, North Carolina at the soccer tournament, TST, the 7 Oh, yeah, 7. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be there again this year. Okay, I was going to ask, like, so what, what is your thoughts on that tournament? And uh, in, in terms of coverage, what do you think that contributes to, like, the soccer world and the Carolina soccer so world? So here's where, you know, when I first started Top Band, one of the things, as an entrepreneur, you realize, you know, some areas have white spaces, right? Yeah. Spaces that you can get into. Like, for me, I was like, okay, no one, no disrespect to any reporters in Charlotte. I was like, none of you follow the game. You don't have the passion, right? Yeah. And I was like, I do. And this is an area that I can dominate in. And you know, knowing the been, game, having the yeah, passion, being blessed, we were able to we were, were able to position ourselves there. And I think with a tournament like TST, with international tournaments coming here, we're yeah. really seeing North Carolina becoming a really good hub, hub for soccer. Right? Yeah. So to me, it's more like how can you maximize stuff like that when it's in your backyard right. now, right? So that's where I see it from an entrepreneur standpoint. I'm like, okay, what kind of content can we get with a lot of great people that are coming to the Charlotte area? You know, you got Nani coming, Ocho Cinco was oh, there yeah. last year. You know, yeah, Clint Steve Dempsey Nash. was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Clint I Dempsey. mean, it's a really. Ryan Reynolds was almost there, dude. I heard he had his plane ticket on really? standby. Really? I did yeah. not know that. Because if Rexman made the semifinals, okay, then he, then he was flying out. Yeah, and then you can you can continue to see <laughs> that like. The first year was awesome, and I think this year is going to be even better. I because so they excited. have they have now a year under their belt. Okay, we yeah. did this right, we did this wrong, we did. It's kind of like the same thing we do at Top. Been like, me and my top people get together and we talk about, okay, this is going good, this didn't do so great. How can we improve this? How can we do this? You know, and so it's the same thing. Tournaments like this and Absolutely. stuff going on in the Charlotte area is just going to continue to improve in terms of soccer. The exhibition games? Yeah. We got UNC, Bank of America, and uh, South Carolina and Columbia all hosting games, exhibition games. High level games. Massive. I'm yeah. a Celtic fan. I get to see my team nice. in person. For the first time yeah. in my life, I get to see them in person. That's so awesome, excited. man. I would say, since I'm a Honduran fan, like, I'm kind of a Celtic fan now because oh, I've got go. Palma. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So, yeah. like, I watch now because that's that's my country's player, Absolutely. you know. So, and then they had Emilio Izaguirre. Yeah, yeah, Izaguirre. Yeah, yeah. He, I watched him for years too. Oh, there. dude! And in the Scottish accent, here they say Izaguirre is yeah. brilliant. I loved it. Oh my god. Uh, well, hey, good times. Hey, thank you so much for joining for sure, us, man. man. Uh, I'm gonna post all the links to your socials on here, and uh, well, hey, keep doing what you're doing, man. We appreciate it, and I expect to see more emoji tweets in the near future. Awesome. Thanks, <laughs> man. Let's go.